as you guys can see, I am in my garden. And it's a little snowy, so I can't really do much gardening right now. But how many of you guys are getting spring fever to get back in the garden? I know I sure am, because it's time to plan now. So everyone should be kind of planning what they're wanting to do and getting ready for the garden. I wanted to talk to you today about one plant. This is in probably my top five things that I have to grow every single year because it has so many uses. It's so versatile. So I want you to stay tuned because we're gonna talk about the plant, how easy it is to grow, and all the uses for it. Well, I know you guys are on pins and needles. Can you figure it out? Can you guess what plant I'm talking about? I'm kind of giving you clues already. Does anyone know? Are you ready? A winter sunflower. We're gonna talk about sunflowers today because sunflowers are probably one of the best things that you can grow because the whole plant, the roots, the stalk, the petals, the bud, everything you can eat. And there's so many things you can do with it and it is, like I was saying earlier, it's so versatile. So stay tuned because I'm gonna show you lots of things you can do with this plant. Now when we talk about sunflowers, sunflowers come in many, like hundreds of different varieties. And one I wanna specifically talk about is black oil sunflower seeds, which are an heirloom, it's an open pollinated type of sunflower. Because these seeds are really high in the oils, high in proteins, so they're gonna be really versatile. But all other types of sunflowers are still gonna be good. These are gonna have a black seed. And then a lot of the different varieties like this, also they use them for dye. They make a, like a purpley blackish dye and you can use that to dye fabrics and things like that. And then other varieties can be like the gray and like a white striped or some of them can be just kind of a tan color. So there's different kinds of seeds. They all have great nutritional benefits to them, but the black oil sunflower seeds are going to be, like I say, a little higher in the fats and then the proteins. Now they've been growing sunflower seeds forever because the ethnobotanists believe that when you're talking about crops that they predate corn, beans, and squashes. So that's pretty neat. And I think with all you guys starting to grow so much, we're gonna do a lot more with our sunflowers besides just looking at them for their beauty because they are gorgeous. They totally set off a garden. They're so simple and easy to plant. You just basically have to throw them in, you know, in the ground a little bit, put a little dirt over them and a little water, I mean, and they'll grow. So it's a very smart plant. And it has something called heliotropism, where it can turn its head toward the sun. So in heliotropism, it basically means the sunflower, your sun rises in the east, here's the east, the sunflower is going to raise up, it's gonna face the sun, it's gonna go toward the west, right? The sun goes down at night, and then guess what happens at night? The sunflower is gonna go back to where it needs to be, for the morning to get that sunlight from the east again. And the sunflower is so smart that when the actual bud was taken off of the sunflower stalk, and there was no flower head on it at all, that the stalk literally would turn toward the sun and follow the sun, even without having the big flower head. Isn't that cool? It's totally cool. So I think that's neat. It's a very smart, smart plant, and it gives so much to us. And the Hopi tribe, they used it also as a dye and they thought that it would help bring rain and warmth to the earth. So you guys can grow it in your garden so that you can have all those wonderful things too. And it's, can you guys hear a little forest? He hears my voice. <laughs> Listen to him. He's gonna lose his voice. An interesting fact about sunflowers are they're really good for your soil. So when you plant your seeds in the ground, so here's my soil. It's frozen salad, <laughs> can't even get in there. But if I would go ahead and plant my seeds in the soil, they're going to help pull up with their roots. It's gonna pull up any contaminants or toxins and also pull up the nutrients. It's great for other plants in your garden. So with companion planting here, I have raised beds. I have a lot of other plants around. Everything's gonna benefit from them. So if you have unruly soil or you need a little help with your soil, planting some sunflowers around could be very helpful. And it's something that I like to let grow. I let the sunflowers, <laughs> can you guys hear my little guy Forrest? He hears my voice and he knows it's time to eat. <laughs> He's like, hurry, hurry. So the good thing about the sunflowers is you can go ahead and plant them. I just let mine go to seed and I leave tons of them. They're all throughout the garden. 
And so I'll leave a lot of them there, let them dry and save them for the birds. And then a lot of the big ones I'll go ahead and save and I use them throughout the winter. I use the big seed heads that I give my chickens as a treat when they can't get outside in the snow and the cold weather. So it's something that they'll reseed themselves. You necessarily, if you leave them where they are, they will reseed, but it is an annual, okay? Now, I like to do things easy around here. So even now with the snow, I'll go ahead and throw some sunflowers in different places that I want them possibly to grow. And the snow is going to go ahead and let them kind of sink down in the ground and I'll have some sunflowers pop up there. So I like to do these little experiments. We'll do an experiment. I'm just gonna put some right here. I'm gonna put them in the snow. I'm, I wouldn't necessarily cover them up, but I have chickens coming in the garden now, so they'll probably eat them all, so I wanna make sure they're covered up. And then as the snow naturally melts, they're gonna go in the ground, and then we'll see it in the spring if I start getting some little sunflower buds here. We'll have to keep you updated on that one. Easy gardening there. I had to run in real quick. As you guys heard, Forrest is screaming for me for his lunch, <laughs> so better make him his lunch while we're talking. So these sunflowers, so I wanted to go over a few things you can do with them, and that is you can use the leaves. So I like to make sunflower leaf tea, so you can use it as, as a tea. And then during the summertime when you're having them fresh, you can saute them with a little butter and garlic. You could even make them into like um, chips, you know, like you'd make a kale chip, you can do it like that. Um, you can go ahead and use the green part, the leaves, and also the flower, make them both into teas. Now the sunflower leaf is loaded, has vitamin E, which is good for your heart and immune system, and also it has selenium, which is great for your adrenals. It's shown to help with arthritis, and it's really good for any type of like uh, intestinal, gastrointestinal problems or inflammation, or respiratory problems, like if you had bronchitis and pneumonia. So studies have shown that it's really helped with that, but always check with your doctor. I always use my leaves in the summer months as fodder for my animals. So it's great for your cattle, your pigs, your sheep, your goats. So it's something that you can add to their you know, other foods and then that you don't have to worry about getting up food from the feed store because you can supplement for a lot of the things you can grow because growing sunflowers is so simple and easy and you can pop them up anywhere. The stalk you can use, you can make them when they're dry, you can make them into a flower. You can use it for dyes, use them as salves. So the flour itself can be used on salads and that's actually one of my favorite ways. I love flowers. I use flowers in so much. So I'll put them on top of tacos or on top of an, a salad. It just looks so beautiful because they're highly, highly nutritious. And yes, dogs love them too, and they're an awesome treat. Aren't they, Molly? Do you like your sunflower seeds, your black oil sunflower seeds? Oh, they're good. They're good. Now, as I'm going out to feed little forests, of course, everybody knows the seeds are good. Us humans like to eat the seeds. You can roast them, eat them raw or roasted. But also, the livestock love this. It's a great source of fat. So in the winter months, I like to supplement and just give them a little bit, you know, too, too much of a good thing is not good. You only want to give them a little bit. But the sheep, it's good for goats and pigs and cattle and horses. And here comes little, little guy. Hi, come on. And here comes my girls. They love them, look at them. Getting good source of oil, keep them warm for winter time. Hello, little Betty White. There's Betty White. Come here. See, they love them. They're fighting over them. <laughs> There's lots of good things. They like them. Here. Come on, girls. Better put it in their bin. Hold on. So this will be a perfect treat for our nursery school here, all my little babies and mamas. The mamas will get a little boost. It'll help their milk. Help them keep warm in the cold night. <laughs> Rambo, do you want some? Poor Rambo. Hi. 
Here we go. Is that good? All right. Enough for you. Now time to feed little Forrest. Little Forrest is still too young right now to have his sunflower seeds, but he will soon. He just likes his milk. Forrest is doing really good. His appetite's really grown. He's, he's drinking a lot more and he's strong. He's very loud. <laughs> he's getting strong, so he's doing good. Seven, eight. Nine, ten. Yeah. Like almost six ounces. Woo, look at you. You're doing so good. It's a big boy. And horses, too. Here, Smokey. Sadie. And as you can see, Molly. <laughs> Molly loves them. Wherever they drop, she eats them. It's like her favorite treat. You want some more? <laughs> and it's a great supplement for my guineas, my ducks, my turkeys, and my chickens. Chick, 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 chick. I like to put my sunflower seeds in their chicken feed. I just mix them in there too. Good for them to lay lots of yummy eggs. And not to mention in those winter months to supplement and give those wild birds. Some energy too. And they're fun to watch. And now I'm also going to show you my chickens favorite way to get their sunflower seeds is from fodder. So basically what I'm going to do is you can use like wheat berries. I always use my sunflower seeds and then I'm going to sprout them. And it's a little different than a sprout because the sprout is just going to be slightly when it emerges from the seed. This is going to grow an extra few days where it kind of is more like grassy where it's going to get taller where you get more roots. And then that way in these winter months, you know, they're not getting that green vegetation. It's a good way to supplement their diet. So they're getting that greenery to help them make it through until the grass and everything starts to growing in the spring. So come in, let's see how we do it. So when you're doing this, you're gonna need two five gallon buckets. Usually you can go ahead and drill some holes in the bottom because you want it to drain. You do not want your seeds to sit in the water because then they're gonna get moldy and, and they're gonna go bad. This is a broken bucket. <laughs> that I've been using. So that's all I need because there's plenty of holes in it. And I want to soak them really, really good. So what I'm going to do is I put a lid on them. I'm going to let them soak overnight. And then after they've soaked, they're going to kind of start sprouting a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and I will drain it out like so. Dump out my water and then I'll go ahead and I'm just going to rinse them every day. Just like that. See? And then they're going to start sprouting. So I've totally covered my seeds in water. I'm going to put a lid on them. I'm going to bring them inside because I don't want to keep them outside when it's freezing cold because then it won't work. But you need a little bit of warmth. I'm going to go ahead and sprout the seeds so they kind of start opening up. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to drain the water just like this. And then put them in another bucket because if there's still more moisture, it'll drop or drip down there put my lid on it and then I'm just going to rinse them off, you know, a couple times a day and then it's going to start growing and then when I, they're ready, I'm going to have like a little bitty plant and I'm going to throw it out to them and they love it because there's nutrient dense. They're going to get a lot of vitamins and it's a great way to supplement your feed where you don't have to feed them as much. So stuff like this really works good and you guys can grow these seeds on your homestead or you can get these 50 pound bags of black oil sunflower seeds at the feed store and especially when they go on sale, try to stock up because they're very useful. Now here's another reason you guys all should be planting lots of sunflowers in your garden is because it's a great trellis. So these stalks can, they can get, you know, 
10, 15 feet high and they're thick and Molly likes to eat them. <laughs> so this is just a smaller one that I had, but it's very, you know, hardy and it's great to use as a trellis. So I like to use it for my beans. I like to use it for my cucumbers and I use them all. That way you don't have to worry about using T-posts or anything and they work out good and everyone works together. <laughs> Are you having fun with that, Molly? So now it's time to start planting, getting those sunflower seeds. Uh, I really like Baker Creek Seed Company because they have a lot of rareseeds.com. They have a huge variety of sunflower seeds, like so many different kinds. Big ones, little ones, burgundy color ones, ones that have the really black seeds that you can use for dye. They have the black oil sunflower seeds, they have the striped ones, there's so many different varieties. But you can find sunflower seeds, you know, most anywhere. They're not very expensive and they add so much beauty to your garden as well as a need at your home or your homestead you could use them for your animals and for things for you to eat and get nutrient dense food and it's just an amazing plant it is my favorite it is in my top five and I've talked to countless people they have the most beautiful gardens and then they always say they forget to plant the sunflower seeds this is your your reminder because it's early enough make sure you plant your sunflower seeds for your spring and your summer enjoyment let me know what your favorite sunflower is leave the comments below and I can can't wait to see your sunflowers this spring. See you later. Did you guys know that in the 16, 17, and 1800s, chocolate was consumed as a beverage? There was no such thing as a chocolate candy bar. Well, we're bringing chocolate tea back to the 21st century because it's loaded with antioxidants our body loves, and it's a great source of magnesium that's wonderful for bone and heart health. It's a great addition to your coffee machine or your French press or just along with your favorite sweetener. You can find it at offgridwithdougandstacy.com along with our brand new tea infuser, simple to use for easy steeping. Cheers!